God has really challenged me to find inspiration in other people, but not to find comparison. Hi, friends. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I talk about God's Word and the real stuff of life, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley, Jay, and of course, Joyce Meyer. We're all in different stages of life. A young career woman and mom to two sweet kiddos. An accomplished songwriter facing an unexpected new life's journey. A leader, creative, and author with a heart for adventure. And a world-renowned Bible teacher whose personal story has impacted millions. And there's you. Because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us and let's talk it out. Hi, friends. You are going to be so happy that you are here with us today because we are talking about style, what's in, what's out. But even bigger than that, we are talking about designing your life in a way that will inspire you, make you happy, and point everyone to Christ because that's what it's all about. And we have our special guest with us today, Katie Torwalt. Katie, Thank you. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you. I love this woman. I yes. love Katie Torwalt. <laughs> yeah, we're like the Katie Torwalt fan yes. club. Yes. Right here. Yes. 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 So. We just love you. So sweet. Katie, as I'm sure you know, um, she and her husband Brian are worship leaders. They've been a part of Jesus Culture for a long time. We've been so blessed to have you a part of many of our Joyce Meyer Ministry conferences, and it's always so fun when you guys are there. And Katie also has fabulous fashion sense. Oh, she does. Yeah. Nice. So what? You guys are blessing me today. <laughs> <laughs> we only speak Thank honest truth in here. So. Yes. That's true. Thanks, we're ladies. big encouragers, but we never lie. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. It's always <laughs> It's always the real stuff. Yeah. I love it. But Katie, also, you, you do a lot on Instagram about style and design. And so there's just a lot in your life. Mother to Indigo, she is the cutest little thing. Thank you. She I think so. is a sweetie. <laughs> so I thought a great way to kind of start this is to talk about what style is. Right. And I love this definition. It says that style defined is a manner of doing something, a distinctive appearance t- typically determined by the principles according to which something is designed. Mm. So when we look at style, we look deeper than just the surface. You know, right. it's just not what we choose to put in a room or to put right. on us. Right. It it needs to reflect how we're designed. Yeah. So I love taking this opportunity to look at the design that God has put into us, the detail and the yeah. love. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm so excited about this topic. <laughs> Did you tell Katie I love that. how nervous we all were about like what to wear today? No. Oh yeah, we talked about it. It's yeah. like, <laughs> oh no. We had yes. an email thread. I said, I feel like my outfit has to be on point right. because yeah. Katie oh, Torwald's coming and she's everything that you just said. She's sad. That's generous, you guys. You That's very generous. Yes. Well, well, we've Jenny's already been working. Idea. We've my, been yeah. working on my our... idea. My idea was just like, well, just can it all. Let's Let just it wear go. PJs. Let's go PJ party. We could have. I, yeah. <laughs> I said, let's just go completely basic and just wear trash bags. Yeah. yeah. You know, just yeah. like, yeah. let's just start with nothing. Uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> Build from there. Work our <laughs> But have that. you always had a love for style, design? Where did yeah. it come from? I think so. Even as a little girl, my poor mom, you know, I would change my outfits three times a day kind of a thing. <laughs> uh-huh. And uh, I think I realized just growing up, it was just part of my expression. Uh, we write music. We lead worship. I definitely would consider myself just an artist in general. And it's just one of the expressions that I think God put in me. Hmm. Um, and that goes for style, like what we wear every day to like the space that we live in yeah. mm-hmm. to honestly, even food, like cooking and yeah. stuff like that, that it just different seasons. Uh, you just lost me on that one. I'm okay. sorry. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I already, I already took <laughs> what on track there, but, um, <laughs> just different seasons where that kind of expression is maybe more what I'm focused on. And I love it. I don't know. And especially if it's, uh, a way that I can express myself that can bless the people around me, mm-hmm. whether that's the space that we create or um, like my my mom is, we're really close and I love like just helping her feel good about herself mm-hmm. and putting stuff together for, we travel a lot. So packing, <laughs> I hate packing actually, to be honest, I hate it. But um, it's not my favorite putting outfits either. together that will, that you'll feel great in that right. day that you just don't yeah. have to think about it. And it can just help you have a happy day that day and feel confident. I love doing that for my friends 
friends or my mom or mm-hmm. just different people in my life. And then myself, too. I yeah. try yeah. to think yeah. that way. Well, you said you got to design for your mom, right? You got yeah. to make a space I did. for her that I did. meant a lot to you. It really did. It was something I always wanted to do. Um, she is totally a homebody. She loves to be at home. She helps us with our little girl. And so when we travel, we actually built a space uh, as part of our house that sh- both my parents live in, like a little mother-in-law unit. Oh, yeah. And it overwhelmed her. The process of it started to overwhelm her, I think, the designing aspect of it. And so I got to do it. And I loved it. So it ended up being this surprise for her. Aww, and I got to pick cool. out, you know, some finishes and stuff like that that I thought that she would like. Mm-hmm. And then I got to show her at the end the finished product, mm-hmm. bring her down to see this new space for her. Oh, nice. And, the the uh, big reveal yeah. and no, everything. Oh, my gosh. It was my own HGTV yeah. kind Woo, of moment. <laughs> yeah. It was so fun. It was so fun. And she loves it. And now she's, of course, even made it more her own with her own stuff and everything. But yeah. Yeah. it was something I always wanted to do. So I, I loved that part of style. I love that part of designing our life. And uh, yeah, I think I've been this way probably since I was a kid. It's just something that I think that God created me this way yeah. to see this way or something. Yeah. yeah, I love it. One thing I really appreciate is what design makes us feel. To me, it's so mm-hmm. much more about the feeling that it gives yeah. us, even than just what it looks like. Because whether it's when somebody walks into my home or or walks into the women's conference that yeah. we're all working on, the, mm-hmm. the question is always, what do we want people to see and feel? Mm-hmm. What do we want to point people to right. mm-hmm. when they're in those spaces? Mm-hmm. So I think it's a great opportunity to you know, make people feel comfortable or to make them feel inspired or yeah, to make yeah. them feel, you know, creative, whatever it might be, but in all of it to point people to Christ, to what matters yeah. most. I think that's interesting because you think of style as like something personal for me. Mm-hmm. My style of what I like to wear is for me, so I look good. But like what you guys are saying is it's actually a tool for me to give back to other people. Like the whole point of it is to point people back to Jesus, you know? And you kind of don't think of it that way, but that is the whole point of it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think yeah. it does evoke something in us just to see something uh, colorful. I, you guys do, like you said, I got to come to a lot of the conferences. We get to lead worship there. And you guys really do a great job of creating something mm-hmm. that's visual, that is that evokes something in you that creates joy, that just brings you into the whole experience ready to receive from God. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do that with our space. We do yeah. that. We Part of our creation in our space is even just creating a place of worship yeah. in our home. And so, but it is, a, you know, I try to keep the house clean. I try to keep the space. I have a lot of white in our house, too, because my mind is kind of wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I like having that blank slate yeah. so yeah. I can create from that place. Yeah. But it's like, that's different for everybody, what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. And I love seeing how... I, I love seeing people's spaces. I love, and even their personal style, mm-hmm. just because you can kind of see that reflection of how their brain works, how God created them to be through those things and yeah. their expression of that. And yeah. so, yeah. yeah. Well, and really what it all points back to is making the most of what God gives us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, that's, that's where you talk about being a good steward mm-hmm. of what God gives us and just pointing people to Him through making the, the very most beautiful thing out of whatever He gives us yeah. that we can. Yeah. So we're going to start right now with Joyce talking about what living a good life looks like, and then we'll be back to give you some specific things that you might want to consider, or maybe not, you know, do your own thing, <laughs> <laughs> about what is in and what is out right now. To be honest, the real call on my life is, and always has been, to help people, once they're saved, grow and mature so they can have the life that Jesus died to give them. He didn't die just so we could get saved and someday go to heaven and spend 50 years here miserable. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, to destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Amen? And I, I'm not talking about enjoying life when it's time for a vacation or when you get to go shopping. I'm talking about, I believe that God offers us an ability to enjoy everyday, ordinary, plain old 
life. You know, if the only time we can enjoy ourselves is when something exciting is going on, then we're going to miss a lot of joy in life. So, how many of you are ready to just dig a little bit deeper and really learn more? All right. Colossians 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, by the will of God. So, boy, we should underline by the will of God because if we're not doing what we're doing because we really believe it's God's will for us to do it, how can we ever do it well or how can we enjoy it? You say, well, how can I know if I'm in the will of God? Well, to be honest, it's not all that hard. I mean, God is not going to give you something to do that's going to make you miserable all the time. I believe that if we're in the will of God, whatever we're doing, number one, we're going to be pretty good at it. I don't think that we should have to spend our life feeling like we're trying to put uh, a round peg in a square hole all the time. You know, I'm very comfortable doing what I'm doing. Now, I've had to learn things about, you know, not getting up here and trying to impress people and so on and so forth. Although I work hard, what I'm doing is not hard for me to do because I'm in the will of God doing it. Now, if you're really designed to be a stay-at-home mom and that's where God wants you and you're off trying to do something else because you think that that's what you need to do to be a, a modern woman, you're going to be miserable. We all have to get around to saying, I want to do what God wants me to do. I'm not going to compare myself with anybody else. I'm not going to compete with anybody else. I just want to be in my place doing what God wants me to do. Isn't that the key to this whole thing? Yeah. It's it's knowing that God designed us for a purpose mm -hmm. and yeah. not trying to be something else. So we're going to talk more about comparison, but but just briefly, knowing that fact that God designed me in mind, you know, with with a plan and a purpose and wonderful things that if I can stay within that and not think I need to be like her or her or her, mm -hmm. then it changes yeah. the way we see ourselves and the spaces that we create, whether it's, you know, our own personal style, our life around us, our family, whatever it may be. I think that's yeah. why it's so important that you even think about this topic in general, because otherwise you can just live your life like it's just happening to you mm -hmm. without purpose. Yeah. And that's when I know for myself, I can get wrapped up in what other people think of me because this is happening to me and I my perspective is different. But when, you've, when you are purposefully looking to see like why God put these things in you and how is he designing my life, then I think it helps take some of that away because you're living, I'm living to do what I'm called to do, not like, why can't I be like Katie? I want to look cute like Katie, but I want to do it the way that God made me <laughs> yeah. to do, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. think that it's really important to do that on purpose. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. It's, imp it's important to follow the design. Like, and I've learned to grow into that more. Like, yeah, follow the design, sure. the original design that God had for me. Like, I remember being a little girl, and I used to love the show Punky Brewster, and so I used to always wear like neon things. Mm -hmm. I can see, I can see you as a little punky. <laughs> I was like a little punky Brewster. Uh -huh. Like that was my girl. You emulated like, that. Yeah. I wanted to be yes. her. Like, and so I would wear like one neon pink sock, one neon green sock. And my mom used to always just be like, I just give up. Like I give up. Let her go. Uh -huh. But then for church, I would want to wear the big ruffle socks, and I wanted to have the big like beautiful church dresses really? I wanted my, my hair was pretty long so we used to roll it and I'd have curly hair oh. but then at school I wanted to wear like corduroys and like turtlenecks and cardigans like hmm. primer I had but I I when I, when I got older you know of course I started seeing other people's style and didn't want to do that but as I am in my mature more mature ages now I'm embracing that even more like God you're going given, back to Punky Brewster. I'm going back to Punky Brewster. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, good for you. Like, because I've understood, I understand now that all of those different ways of how I like to dress, like for this, I do tend to dress more conservatively, mm -hmm. you know, but if you see me out, you know, in the streets, I'm probably going to have on joggers and sneakers, like some Air Forces or Yeezys or, you know, like I'm, but but then when I'm doing worship, I might be a different look. And I, mm -hmm. but that's not me playing a role into other things. Right, I don't have right. a specific style. That's how God made me. Mm -hmm. And I'm embracing that unique 
design that he has for me that I like to do different things and I'm okay with it the same way I like to change my hair a lot. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, listen, you're talking to the right person because like I said, <laughs> three outfits a day as a kid, you know, and I think I think I, I wrestled with that too, just feeling like, well, maybe I'll be misunderstood in this area hmm. if I dress like Punky Brewster this day, yeah. which I didn't really watch Punky Brewster. So I'm, not, I'm trying to picture what does that look like, but the neon, that <laughs> it was makes neon, me, it neon, she wore like scruffy jeans, okay. t-shirts, ponytails were kind of like, kind of like, like out there. Like, like out wild. there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, I love that. And I she get it because yeah, I think there's just like, <laughs> it's different parts of, of yourself that you're expressing. You want to try out different stuff for me, style. And this whole thing, it's fun. It's part of just the way my brain thinks. It's just one of the things. But it's not everything. Yeah. And I think there was different seasons where because of comparison or because of fear of being misunderstood, whatever, I would adapt maybe to a certain way that I thought was like, well, everyone else will be looking like this or everyone else will be doing this. Mm -hmm. So I should do that. And uh, I realized like... It just wasn't, I wasn't really expressing that part of myself that was truly authentically me that God created. And now I think growing a little older, I've realized, no, this is just, this is just who I am. And like, everybody won't want to do that because that's not how God created them to be. And so, but it is really important. And then I love what Joyce touched on too, just like, even with the stay at home mom thing, or just embracing not only who you are, but the season that you're in, because mm-hmm. that has really changed becoming a mom. Um, you know, you kind of go through that phase where you're like, <laughs> you're well, everything changes, your body changes, yeah. your lifestyle changes so drastically in those early stages of motherhood with your small child. Mm-hmm. It does not matter. They spit up on anything you wear. It doesn't matter, right? Like all of it. It's um, a look. It's a look. <laughs> a look. And you embrace it and you're like, do I wear black or white? Or, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. what's the less showing? Right. Color? Yeah, right. Um, but, and then now it's changed again and it's that quick, like, you know, I'm in a phase now where my little girl's four and I don't have to think about the spit up, but it just, it's just a picture that, that you realize, you know, there's just seasons of life for stuff. There's seasons of life where you're on stage leading Mm -hmm. worship. There's seasons of life Mm -hmm. where you're going to the grocery store more and you're at home with the kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. And how that looks is different. And just being authentically you and true to yourself during that time um, and who God created you to be and celebrating that in every way and stewarding it is what feels, you're going to feel different that way. You're going to feel aligned differently that way. And I've definitely noticed that for myself. That we, it feels, we all have to figure ourselves out, yeah. don't we? All I the mean, time, though. I've tried some yeah. crazy, crazy mm-hmm. things. And mm-hmm. because I do enjoy being, you know, an individual. I love that side of you, Ginger, <laughs> by the way. I, I love it. I don't think I knew gender was so creative and fun until we spoke a few times into some of the conferences or something. And we showed up <laughs> last time, the last conference we were at, and we had matching kind of wild shoes. Like my shoes were a little bit wild for a Joyce Meyer conference. <laughs> but I looked down and Ginger had the same shoes on. And yeah. I was like, I you loved know what? it. We get each other. Oh, no. like, when can I see started it in the working nails, for you so. a few years ago, no, a few years ago, it was like 12 years ago. And it's so a few now, yeah. It, <laughs> it left an imprint this moment. So I was in your office oh, no, I'm a meeting. little bit nervous of what this <laughs> moment is. Some of them I don't share. <laughs> <laughs> you walked in and you had black jeans on and your sock was over the jeans and you had these fabulous Ooh. black boots on, like combat-ish. And I was like, she put her jeans in the sock. <laughs> okay, okay, notice. It sounds kind of bad. Yeah. So I go home and I was like, I gotta find those shoes. She's immediately. So I, uh-huh. Yeah, so I did. <laughs> okay, all of her jeans. <laughs> I waited a couple of days. I don't want to look like I was like obviously trying to copy, but I did. And I've got some boots that were different enough, but still had the same. Mm. I could accomplish the same goal. <laughs> So I, I it, like you've just always been very it good stuck at that. Out. It stuck yeah. out. Well, I remember looking at other people who are much more like like classic and just beautiful, and thinking, I need that is what I should be doing instead, mm-hmm. and you just even thinking about trying to emulate that, it just never felt like me. It yeah. never mm-hmm. seemed a hole. exactly. It mm-hmm. never seemed exactly right. And I love that God gives us the leeway to try different things, yeah. see how it works for us. When when we look at design, I, I love this definition now of design, and it says to intend for a definite purpose, to assign in thought or intention a purpose or plan of action. God designed each one of us just like that with a purpose mm-hmm. and a plan of action. Mm-hmm. And if I didn't have a little bit of that 
individuality, individual, I can't even say the word. Individuality. Individuality. That was was designed itself. I take it. Individuality. Not to say that word. (laughs) Individuality. But you know, he, he, he gives us all a different spark for what he wants yeah. us mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I just really want to encourage everybody with that. Just yeah. be you. Because when mm-hmm. I try to be somebody else, it it, it doesn't work. It's, it's not fulfilling. It's not meant to be. Yeah, exhausting. It's really yeah. exhausting. exhausting. Yeah, it is not it is. fulfilling. And like mm-hmm. the thing that I finally you know wrap my mind around is like God is the ultimate creator. He is like yeah. the creator. He knows such creativity, such creativity. Think yeah. of the entire world. All of us look different. No snowflake is the same. He knows every hair on our heads that we either buy or grow out of our heads. <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> he knew I was going to add hair to my head. Uh-huh. He knew that. So uh-huh. I'm just saying. Like, and he still got the numbers. And he, he still knows all of the numbers. Even I, I don't know. <laughs> he knew which bag I was going to get. He knew. <laughs> he keeps a tab. He keeps a tab. Tab. He's like, oh, I, I know he's probably one of his most Today. I'm like, you keep it busy. I think it's good. Five thousand, uh, five million. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Updated God. counts every day. <laughs> Updated count. Yeah. You got every two weeks. You go get a new head count, sir. <laughs> 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 but I'm saying he knows this, and so like to to stifle our creativity with our with mm-hmm. the way that we dress, the way that we do our hair, the way I mean, yeah. some people look at it as so superficial and so. But I'm telling you, like nothing gets me in the mood to like mm-hmm. work out work out r- other than like a um a cute little workout outfit. Mm-hmm. You know, like it matters. It ma- like the way you dress. I know when I'm in a slump. And it's okay to be in that. Like yeah. when I'm in the oversized t-shirt and or yoga pants all day and it's like I know I need that time. I just want to eat ice cream and cry or, you know, or just sit there and veg out and watch a Netflix. Style. Mm-hmm. That's a style, mm-hmm. but yeah. but I I think we don't we don't as Christians, we don't always put enough not emphasis, but we don't like encourage people like get up like cuz it really does change your mood when I'm ready to work out if I have a cute little outfit I'm gonna actually want to maybe put that on you mm-hmm. know and and maybe get on the treadmill you know <laughs> but I'm gonna do something I'm at least go, I'm at least go to the mm-hmm. grocery store with my yeah. <laughs> cute little workout <laughs> so that's a step but yeah. I'm saying it does really style and design plays more of a role mm-hmm. in our everyday lives and emotions and feelings and who God made us to be than I think we we talk yeah. about so mm-hmm. I'm super grateful we're talking about it because I think it's really gonna help help people, mm-hmm. you know, to yeah. hear that. I do too. Katie, what's something that you would say is is a thing that you're looking at right now? What's something, whether it's personal style, home decoration, whatever it may be, what do you look what are you liking? Yeah, that's a great question. I I mean I love how colorful this set is because I think like even like you were describing, you know, there was a season where I probably saw, okay, let's Go more neutral. And with travel, you know, mm-hmm. it's easier to just pack clothes that are very neutral, sure. a lot of black. Um, and I've been loving color the last couple of years. And I think you just see it more. I think practically what makes it a little more wearable is there's a lot of like monochromatic mm-hmm. uh, things that you can buy. And so it makes you be able to put an outfit together a little more like simply mm-hmm. um, without having to put too much thought and effort into it. Yeah, it's okay um, to wear all one color. Mm-hmm. It is. It looks yeah. great. It is. And it's so fun. And for me, it's just like an easy hack for travel because I'm like, these clearly yeah. go together. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> I don't have to wake up at any time and be like, how do I, where do I find the pants for this? Like yeah. what goes? Um, and so that's like just a really practical, fun thing for me. Mm-hmm. And I mean, honestly, I think even like you talking about like, the counterfeit version for me of creativity is when I'm doing it from a place to impress or Mm. not be authentic for myself. But I mean, I, I'm really inspired just in general with God's creation, with, uh, with nature, with outside. I think one of the things I even do in my house is I try to make it feel like some of the places in creation, the ocean is one of the Mm. places I love to go. If it feels that light, beachy, like peaceful feeling, um, hence the all white, Mm -hmm. you know, that's, I'm trying to emulate that because that's something that has inspired me now that God created. Yeah, it makes you happy. To create myself and Mm -hmm. it makes me happy and it evokes something in me. And I, I love that. I love that about God that I think that the detail to things that he knew would bless us, um, that hopefully we steward well, some stuff we haven't stewarded as well. Um, and I want to do that now in myself, in my space, in my life, with how I wear, with how I take care of my body, mm-hmm. um, all those different things. But those are just very like practical things that, um, you know, creativity sometimes can be this big, like, oh, I don't know, I'm just inspired by like 
very swirly kind of language and everything. But really it comes down to, yeah, just being ourselves, stewarding what we have, celebrating who God created us to be, and then highlighting those things that we're thankful for. And um, so yeah. for me, that's my day-to-day creative process, my day-to-day measuring stick with, am I doing those things? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Am I being myself? Am I taking care of what God's given me in this season and making it the most beautiful and uh, special that it can be to bless others with? Yeah. Yeah. And if I'm doing those things, then I feel like in alignment. I'm where I'm supposed to be. I'm doing yeah, what I'm supposed to be doing good. in that season. Yeah. And uh, it goes it goes all the way up and down the spectrum, you know, yeah. with house, space, myself, mm-hmm. my child, my family. Yeah. So and, and part of what what we create, especially at our home, is to make a place that our family's comfortable. I, and I remember as my kids were getting older, I wanted to create that place that the other kids wanted to come. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it wasn't about they wanted to go somewhere else. It's bring them in, bring them into our house. You know, we, we want it to be a place where the neighborhood feels yeah. something yeah. different too. Sure. Yeah. And and praying. This this might sound a little wackadoodle, I don't know. But I'll tell part, you. Okay, thank you. I know you'll be <laughs> honest. Thank you. No, part of when when I am thinking about design and and creating color and and how I want to organize a room in our home, you know, I pray that that whatever I do creates that place of peace and joy and that the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. is a big part of it. So that when people walk in, I don't care as much about what they see as about what they feel, but mm-hmm. I know that they go hand in hand. So Not prayer like is a big part of design, I think. Yeah, it's it true though, because when you walk into your house, you do feel that. Comfortable, I hope. Absolutely. That's, no, it's very that's my desire. But, it, but it's also a reflection of who you are. Mm-hmm. Like it's... You know, you see, it looks like like a museum at certain points, like because you see stuff from it's diff- well lived in artifacts, yeah. artifacts yeah. from like no, from like what you where you travel. Yeah. Oh wow! Yes, yeah, so you can see that, and so it, certain parts look like the, some of the places that she That's traveled. Cool. It, but then you know, like Ginger's favorite color, color if you haven't noticed, is blue. <laughs> so her like her like sitting area is like very blue, okay. and like even the books go into like a yeah. it's a color wheel that goes it's. So wow. pr- it's like it's pretty, <laughs> you know. Like everything is yeah. so like she's so de- like it, it's very intentional. But then something that I liked initially, uh, instantly when I first came over your house was something I used to do. Like also like her candles. She has certain candles in certain Ooh. spaces that you know give you a certain vibe yeah. when you walk through. So yeah. One thing interesting in this, I I am not good at this part of it. I, I love fashion and style for clothing. I can, I can see things in my mind to put together. I could not decorate a house for the life of me. And I think that's just an honest, important thing to admit. That yeah, we're not, that's we don't fine. all have a mind oh, no. like that. But I appreciate those of you who do because it helps me kind of like learn, like I can get a candle and I can pray <laughs> and I can find a picture on, picture on Pinterest that I really like and just copy it. Exactly. Totally. So I will go to Target and I'll say, Okay, this pillow looks really close, so I think I can do that one, and I can maybe find a basket. No, there's not a basket there. I can't get a basket. <laughs> but I think it's utilizing help is really yeah. helpful in how you do this. But stuff. your space is definitely it's conducive to your lifestyle. Exactly. Like when I come over, it it looks like you have two little kids. It, it doesn't. It, it's still designed cute. <laughs> Like, wait, I don't know if that's like a compliment. I mean, but I mean for it me is, it is. It is. It is. It is. For me it is because it's it, it it's very welcoming. Like when yeah. I walk in, oh, like good. you know, like uh-huh. it's like a pizza in the oven, and there's kids playing on in toys, and and there's uh-huh. another kid writing on you know like coloring or something. Uh-huh. So yeah, and that's like true. your daughter's room. Yeah, I just I think my point is that it's okay that if it doesn't come natural to you, no, like if you, I get yep, what you're saying. If you feel yeah. like it's not, but part I wanted of, to yeah. affirm oh, thank you, you to let you know that thank you're you. doing a I'm good doing job. Okay. Yeah. And your kids are thrilled, and <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. living in your house, which is so important. Yeah. Yes. Perfection is not the goal. I it's think of style. Not, that's really important. It is yeah. not the goal of style at all, and uh, you know, excellence is not perfection. I think you doing creating mm-hmm. the space that suits your family, that serves your family that you find your peace in, yeah. that you meet with God in, like you're like, I That's can pray. Really good. Maybe I can't afford a new throw right now, but I can definitely like create an atmosphere in uh-huh. here. And especially as a worship leader, as like a songwriter, I mean, that is really what it comes down to. Somebody's going to walk in my house mm-hmm. and feel the presence of God. Yeah, I don't care 
if it's, I mean, I have cared if it was clean or not. I would like it to be clean. <laughs> uh-huh. I would like it to be comfortable for people as much as possible, but nothing replaces that. Yeah, right. yeah. And uh, even during yeah, the pandemic, good. how much did we all emphasize our homes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just creating that space yeah. where we were like, you know what? This is a haven. This is a place for the presence of God and me to meet during this time. This is a place of yeah, peace and safety and um, so it was, I think that was actually something that I took out of that season that mm-hmm. was like very valuable yeah. that I had, that has stuck with me, mm-hmm. even as we got back on the road, even as the conferences have started back up that we're like, no, there's something about our homes, decoration or not, style yeah. or not, that we are able to create on purpose intentionally yeah. Yeah. to yeah. meet with God and, and have, have a home of, and our family like celebrated mm-hmm. here. Yeah. So but yes, good. small children. We talked about it earlier, but <laughs> yes. I said I like a lot of white, but everything in my house is washable. Yes. A magic so eraser smart. and everything comes off. All our furniture comes off and can go That's in the washing machine. That's an important secret to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I, need, I need to break the secret on that because I'm like, no, I have a small child. We have kids over at, like almost every day of the week. And honestly, I love vintage stores. Yeah. I love thrift stores. Love it. Um, you can find stuff especially furniture and like decorations, like yeah. vases and glassware and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That is really inexpensive and you can create that feeling, cut some branches from outside and yeah. put it in a vase from Goodwill. I mean, I'm just breaking it I down. Love like, this. Yeah, I love honestly, this. Honestly, it can this. create, like you'd be surprised just putting this live branch from outside and lighting a candle next to it. And you're like, oh, I feel yeah. so relaxed. Didn't it's you like make something me. with a noodle? I did a Over, pool noodle. I, I with watched the that what? Pool during noodle? the pandemic. Uh huh. <laughs> what did so you make random. with a pool noodle? I love that you know that. Yeah, um, you I know. Was like, I think I, that that's a noodle. <laughs> I think something happens with with me when we had to go off the road during that last couple of years. All this other stuff started happening to me because I just needed this expression, yeah. you know. So, yeah, I was on. I think I was on Instagram or something, and I saw somebody make out of out of pool noodles. They wrapped the noodles and made this rainbow like headboard. So I actually oh, made it for fun. my daughter for her it's room. It's so like cool. this big. It's huge. Wow. And it has like a sh- like a white fuzzy look to it. And it's yeah. like made of pool noodles, you guys. That is, that is great. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I don't recommend. It took me way too long, but <laughs> it was great during that time. I yeah. literally love the craftiness of that. And like you guys know that I don't care about like where I get my stuff. No, you don't. <laughs> You're good at finding your stuff. Okay. Okay, I do not yeah. care. I mean, I like some, uh, there's, like we, like we said, we talk about seasons, but like there are times when I have like, you know, the resources to do designer things, you know, and those are great. But there are also seasons where I will get a shirt. I, <laughs> I'll i get a shirt from CVS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I found... Um, Our I Christmas found, gifts were uh, from Walgreens? Yeah, Walgreens. Walgreens. We're like, so we're good. Like, Jay, where'd you get that shirt? And she says, Walgreens. <laughs> God, it's from Walgreens. <laughs> and so I got them one. Okay? Yeah, it's so okay. Good. And they want it on the show, just so you know. It's that good. You yeah. can't tell. <laughs> and I have found some... Like leggings, like even on the end caps of grocery stores, like I don't care. <laughs> most of my blazers come from the thrift store. Mm-hmm. Like it's a good spot. For yeah, yeah, I mean most of them do because people like love to give those away. I guess, but I get most of my blazers from thrift stores. I shop at a store, really inexpensive store called Rainbow. I'll buy things there, but like it's a mixture of things. It doesn't it, and how you put it together. It's how yeah. you put it together. It's not how much things are. Mm-hmm. It's how you put it together and use your creativity. To, to really express who you are and who yeah. God's made you to be. So, yeah, like, don't, like, That's if you good. have a headboard with pool noodles, then, then fine. <laughs> Go for it. And if there's a lot of water, you'll be in good shape. You'll be in good shape. You know? It's true. You're yeah. ready. You're it's ready a multi dimensional <laughs> yes. decoration. That's some style right there. <laughs> well, Katie, you Function. said something about being good stewards of what God gives us. You know, it's not about just wasting money or mm-hmm. anything like that, but. To, to find ways to make things beautiful on a budget, that's a yeah. great talent. That's, it is. That's important. I think that's so fun. I like the challenge of that, actually, too. I, yeah. I get where you're coming from because yeah. I'm like, yeah, there's been seasons where it is go cut a branch down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then that's fine. And it's actually, it's actually fun. There's a blessing in that. Mm-hmm. And there is that same feeling of like, oh, this is just part of who God's created me to be, how yeah. I see things. And doing that feels... Yeah, feels like it fulfills that. Yeah. Well, that so. helps us when we feel like I can't afford 
what yeah. I see on other people. Yeah, we don't need to feel that way. Or even what you were saying, you know, if if I'm not a designer, mm-hmm. you know, that doesn't matter because God has put so many other wonderful things mm-hmm, sure. in each one of us. Yeah. So we're going to go back to Joyce and we're going to concentrate a little bit more um, on this problem with comparison that so many of us deal with. And I think we can't talk about this topic without putting down comparison right from the beginning. So let's see what she has to say. Now, what about comparison? Are you right now or have you ever compared yourself with somebody else? How they look compared to how you look, what their personality is compared to your personality, One of the people I compared myself with was my pastor's wife because she was just so sweet and, you know, I didn't think I had a sweet personality. I was a little more like, you know, and uh, especially back then, I'm talking 40 years ago now, I, I have changed a lot and I think I'm a lot sweeter now than I was then, but I wouldn't say that I'm just a real sweet, soft spoken person. I am not like that. And if I try to be, it even doesn't seem right to other people. Um, Mark Twain said, comparison is the death of joy. Boy, I like that. Think about that. Comparison is the death of joy. In other words, if you're comparing yourself with someone else, then you can't have joy. You can't compare your abilities to their abilities, your gifts and talents to theirs, the way you look what your career is, how much of the Bible you read every day, how you pray. You know, sometimes even I listen to other people talk about their prayer life and this and that and something else. And, you know, they had a spiritual dream and, you know, well, I have crazy dreams. I don't every once in a while, maybe I get one that I think is from God, but most of the time they just don't make any sense at all. But I've learned a long time ago that I cannot compare myself with other people, not spiritually, not physically, not, not mentally. I know people that I think are, are much more intelligent than I am, but that doesn't mean that you're not gifted. We're all different. And I'll tell you, God loves variety. You know, you're all valuable. That, that's a lot of peace right there. Yeah, it's so that, good. God loves us no matter what we are putting on our bodies. Mm-hmm. He he loves us no matter how we fail, but he's designed us with specific wonderful things in mind. And that that helps so much cuz we talk about comparison. Mm-hmm. Like we we were talking earlier about how, you know, Jeans have been high waisted, and that that just makes me happy. It makes so happy. <laughs> I know, and now they're going yeah. back down. No, you know, no, no, tops no, no, no. are Keep coming up. up, and pants are going down. No. And I, I th- it's not going to be that way for me. No, no. pants are going no. down. Sounded bad, didn't it? Yeah, the the high rise pants. <laughs> oh, yeah. The waist, the waist, yeah, the waist. Low, yeah, the waist. Yes. So yeah. you know that may be what style does, but that's not going to be what Ginger does because yeah. uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I've got to do what works for me, mm-hmm. and you know, for my body and for my age yeah. and all those different things that we have to think about. If we try to compare ourselves, honestly, we're going to look ridiculous in the end. <laughs> it's true. I remember like in middle school specifically, oh, we wear black necklaces now. Okay, I got to get that black choker necklace. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. No. The one that looked like one? a tattoo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. That, that thing, was a no. yeah. And it goes with every outfit. It did. Oh, now we don't wear this. Okay, now I need to get a shell necklace because that's what's oh cool. Oh, I need that <laughs> same that goes in here that Puka pulls it shells. back. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that comb headband. The comb yeah. headband. Oh, wait, now we wear butterflies in our hair, which now we do again. Um, <laughs> but that's exhausting. Like, I remember as a kid thinking, I can't, like, I can't keep up. And as an adult growing into my own and feeling like, no, I, I like my bell-bottom pants, but I do like them to cover up the pooch I now have as a mom, I'm not going to follow all of the things, and I'm not yeah. going to strive. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be where the piece is. Yeah. yeah. Katie, have you had that, like, um, this is what a worship leader wears. Mm-hmm. You know, this is what I need to look like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I mean, this crosses over into, like, every area of my life. And uh, <laughs> we talk about it with a lot of my friends. We'll, we'll talk about this pretty candidly all the time because we are in this new thing with social media, with filters on social media, yeah. with... Mm-hmm. 
uh, reality TV Mm -hmm. that's not really reality like we talked about. And what does that look like? What does it look like to be a mom in 2022? What does it look like to be a worship leader? What is it? And uh, the comparison game is just crazy. It's so out of hand. And I think it's really subconscious sometimes, too. You don't realize that you're doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, And actually, it just really leaves you feeling very unsatisfied and Mm -hmm. does not promote thankfulness or gratitude Mm -hmm. in yourself. Um, Like you're talking about with the quote, it's just like there's not a lot of joy to be found in that. Mm -hmm. And I always am here for like being the best version of yourself and taking care of yourself and um, celebrating what you have and making what you have beautiful. But at the same time, there is a line of unhealthiness where Mm -hmm you don't realize you're actually comparing to somebody else. This yeah. was never a, an attainable thing for you in this season or as healthy for you or as how God created you to be. Right. You're actually subconsciously comparing to somebody else that God has called to some something else right. that He wants something else from, that they're hmm. doing other things, that uh, it just in every way, genetically, they're a different person right. than you. Like, yeah. right. And... Um, it's not you in your. It's not you in health and wholeness. It's actually somebody else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think even as yeah, as a worship leader on stage in every way. I mean, I've toned it down. I've made it louder. I've done it all. A lot of the time, subconsciously, not yeah. realizing. Mm-hmm. Oh, I tried to adapt myself to what I thought would be expected of me, or yeah. what people would want, or what would come across the best way in this environment. And like you said, there's not a lot of joy in it. And uh, there's not a lot of fulfillment because then you realize I'm not being me. I'm not mm-hmm. being, right. God didn't ask this of me and I'm doing something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. You know, and so it really, uh, it has been a journey for me that I think I still candidly am fully on, but especially with c- comparison in our work with, with being artists and everything, um, I think that God has really challenged me to find inspiration in other people, but not to find comparison. That's good. Oh, that's great. And it really is a limitation for me. Mm-hmm. Um, when I start to compare, I have instantly really stopped growing as myself. Yeah. And uh, if I can find inspiration in those people and I can truly celebrate other people in areas that they're strong in that I'm not strong in, it actually grows something in me and it frees something in me to be more myself. Um, and that's what I want to be for other people. Yeah. yeah, I want people to be around me and not want to be me, but want to be more them. Yeah, want to be more free, and that's something that I think I can only do as myself. Have you figured so, out how to do that? Like, where's that healthy line for you, where it's yeah. inspiration versus comparison? Um, it's fully a heart thing, mm-hmm. so that's how it always is, right? <laughs> you can't mm-hmm. tell why someone is doing something. Only yeah. God knows that. Yeah. Only the person in God knows their heart. And so even when you see somebody being too much or not enough, where what you would think, yeah. oh, they're very whatever. Um, we don't know that about that person. We don't know the motivations of their heart. Only them and the Holy Spirit know. And I know. Mm-hmm. I know. But of course, that line is very fine. And there's sure. certain times where, you know, I think it's just, it's a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, in your heart, there's a conviction that comes on you when you not, you know, you're doing something for the wrong reason, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even if it's the right thing. Those things of, of who's looking at me and what might they think, yeah. right? which shouldn't be our motive. It, it really should be, am I doing what God's asking me to do? Mm-hmm. Am I comfortable in my own skin? That mm-hmm. is so important. And you judge other pe- people much more harshly, I find, and I find this about myself, yeah. when I know I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, when I'm oh, not walking true. in freedom, yeah. yep. when I'm not being authentic to who I am, I judge other people for the same thing. And, yeah. and yeah. the truth is, there is a lot of judgment nowadays. There yeah. is a lot of people oh, yeah. with a lot of opinions. They love to share them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, But I find for myself, because that's all we can do is manage ourselves and be free ourselves, the more free and comfortable and authentic I'm being, I do see the fruit of that in other people around me, that they're able to not look like me, not be like me, but to be more themselves. Even in this day of influencers right. or influencing yeah. people, I want to influence people to be who God created them to be. Yeah. Not yeah. to go out and do exactly what I just did or be who I'm, you know, who I am. Yeah. Um, and so that only happens when I'm doing what God's called me to do in that season and be who I'm supposed to be. So, um, but yeah, I think it's a journey that I'm probably mm-hmm. still walking out. I'm pretty young still, and I'm definitely still figuring yeah, it out. Sure. Yeah. Well, we do go through so many seasons. Yeah. You're, you're talking yeah. about, we, we all have so much to learn all the time, and we go through seasons. Now, That as a mother, it changes who mm-hmm. you are. For me, as I'm growing older, you know, I, I can't 
dress. I don't want to dress like I did when I was in my 20s. And yet I'm, I don't want to look and act my age either. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I just want to be who who I'm comfortable as and what I'm supposed to do. Right. And yeah. the, the same for for all of us. We yeah. we have things that are always changing in our lives. Mm-hmm. And certainly fashion is always changing. Mm-hmm. And so we have to not roll with every fad and every trend and stay true to who God calls us to be. Yeah. And in that, he lets us play. He lets us have some fun in it and try some new things. Yeah, I, I was going to say, like, when you were talking, like, number one, can we normalize, like, complimenting people? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, I mean, because I think that's something that's important and it's a missed, it's a, it's a missing art, I believe. Mm-hmm. Like, just being able to say, hey, girl, like, that little iridescent little nail polish you have on is really, really cute, you know? <laughs> yeah. Or, like, yeah. Ginger, those shoes are cute and, and your whole little get up is cute. Like, the whole yeah, thing. I mean, Okay, the whole your nails thing. are cute. Your <laughs> hair is cute. You want more? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's all good. I'm saying it's it's good to do that because yeah. then it that'll also you don't know what that person's going through yeah. and that can help them. But then let them know, like, girl, you look good, you yeah. know. And then that gives them more freedom, gives you more freedom. And even if you ask, like, where'd you get that from? And that's okay to be inspired. Yes. I think that'll help with that barrier too. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So true. There are there are a lot of things that go into how we design our life, whether it's how we choose to look, how we choose to dress, how we love fashion, style, design. But it, it, there there are these three areas of design that are, are like the principles of design, and it's it's hierarchy, balance, and scale. Hmm. So hmm. just just. Talking a little bit about it's design. So I well, know. No, she just said that for us today. Okay. No, to no, I just, I just have to be so happy. It makes me so happy to talk about this stuff. <laughs> hierarchy in design, yeah. you know, but but it's yeah. really about putting first things first. Yeah. yeah. When we're designing our life, we have to put first things first. Yep. Balance. We all know how important balance is yeah. in our life. If we get our life out of balance, oh, yeah. nothing will be right. Mm-hmm. It's not going to look right. It's not going to be right. It's not going to feel right. Yeah. And the other is scale. And that is what are we pointing people to? What do we want people to notice and see first? Yeah. yeah. And that is Jesus in our life. So, good. you know, designing our life is is not just about aesthetics. Mm-hmm. It It is about trying to... Take what God gives us and shape it and mold it into who He wants us to be. And it's, I I love what you said. It's not about perfection because we are never going to get there. But there is something so beautiful in each one of us, in each one of you who are listening right now. And as you're just listening and you're thinking, wow, what, what can I do with? this that God has given me. There always is something spectacular that you can do with what God has. Put a big smile on your face, you know, make sure that the joy is flowing out of you and into other people's lives. And so I just love the opportunities that we get to talk yeah. about what God can do through all this. Yeah. And Katie, thank you so thank you. much thank you. for this being so with fun. us. <laughs> There's I a lot it. more we could talk about. You were talking about anklets earlier. We you're, were. You're big into yeah. anklets talking right now. It's a sweats, thing. Sweats, sweats, chunky sweats, shoes. Chunky shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. I still want everything to be stretchy after a I couple know. years I in know. sweatpants. Pandemic like, changed. Is there a sweat stretch at all? Yeah. 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 Stretch is yeah. still good. <laughs> stretch is, I'm keeping stretch. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Anything <laughs> else for you guys? What are you loving right now? Anything? Of course, like we said, always high waist. Like always, high yeah, waist. always, always yeah. forever. High, anything high waist, too. always and forever, always high and forever. Yeah. High waist. Higher, yeah. the, the higher, the higher you get, the higher it goes. I don't care. <laughs> Secured. Secured. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that's good for me. I'm loving blazers right now. Yeah, and I'm trying to wean out my skinny jeans to more wide legs, mm-hmm. a little bit more, just a little different. Style yeah. and approach to a mm-hmm. denim. That's good. Yeah. Wide leg is cute. Yeah. It is wide cute. Leg is wide leg, right everybody, you all look so good in a wide leg. Yeah. Yeah. You could have them cropped. Mm-hmm. You could do the high waisted and you can have a little stretch in those and very mm-hmm. cute. Yeah. yeah. I just cut some jeans the other night. That was really fun. Yeah. They were, I just didn't like them. So See? I cut them and now you like love them. them. Yeah, love them. Now you love them again. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. 
Don't be afraid to try things. Yeah, don't just be try. Afraid. Yeah. yeah, what do you got to lose? Yeah. yeah. Well, we do have an offer for you. So if you would like just a little bit of help as we're talking about designing your life in a way that honors God, we have a free audio download for you, and it's called Have a Healthy Attitude Toward Yourself. You have to start there. You will never look good if your heart isn't looking good on the inside and you're not just loving who God made you to be. Yeah. And that is steps that we all have to take to be there. So you can get that free download right now. Go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. And it is there for you. You can also catch up on all of our episodes of the podcast. You can subscribe. We hope that you'll tell your friends about us. Leave us some really nice reviews. That'd be great. And um, again, Katie, thank you. It's been so much fun. Thanks, guys. So fun. (laughs) Thank you, friends. I can't wait to see what everybody does in your fashion life. It's going to be so fun. (laughs) Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. JoyceMeyer.org slash talk it out is a wonderful place. Go there for today's resource to check out all of the episodes and to get to know us a little better. Please don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast and let us know what you're thinking. Your voice is important to us.